Hey guys, it's Tori and I'm here right now with Aaron from Copeland. Hey, How are you man. doing? Just fine, thank just you. Just fine. Uh, it's kind of a hectic day, I'm sure, being kind of like a hometown show. You're just an hour outside of Lakeland. Yeah. Um, so how are you feeling being back in Florida in the humidity? Welcome. Uh, good, yeah, we did, uh, we did a bunch of shows and it was like kind of during a cold snap. So we yeah. did a show in Austin outdoors in 37 degree weather and it was not fun. So yeah, yeah. I prefer the, the, warm, the warm climate. Yeah, sure. as a Florida native, I wouldn't even know what to do <clears throat> in that circumstance. So more, more power to you for surviving. Um, but yeah, so we're going to start with a few finish a sentence questions for you okay. just to start things off. Um, so the last album you listened to that inspired you was? Uh, Moon Shaped Pool by Radiohead. Yeah, good choice, good choice. And now the number one thing you want everyone to know about Copeland is? Uh, worse, <laughs> still around somehow. <laughs> That's probably a good place to start. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we've had a long career, so uh, yeah. being still around is, is an accomplishment in itself. Absolutely. You know, like uh, a lot of bands don't make it as far and still have an audience, you know, mm -hmm. this, this far, like 15 years into their career. Absolutely. So, yeah. We're, we're still here. Yeah, and you did have a small break, and it kind of seems like the inspiration is back and stronger than ever. Yeah? yeah. For yeah. sure. Good. And now, if you could join any other band for one day, it would be? One day? Mm-hmm. One day would oh, be a dream. Oh, it's not going to be enough. <laughs> uh, I really want to play bass for Sade. That would be like my Ooh. dream gig. Bass, but, too. All but right. I wouldn't, but one day is not enough. <laughs> I like, a, I'll try to get, get a whole tour. Maybe I'll right. play, maybe the one day. Mm -hmm. I'll wow them with my bass skills and they'll <laughs> want to take me on tour. Yeah, you just got to throw it out into the universe. Now that you said it, maybe it'll happen, right? <laughs> yeah, and I, and even just having a Sade tour would be incredible. I would go to it, but yeah, yeah, pl yeah she's, she's like my favorite. That'd be like my dream. Mm -hmm. Like I love playing bass and it'd yeah. be cool to. And that's something I didn't know about you. That's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's like my favorite, it's probably my favorite thing to play. Like yeah. if I had to put together like my dream band, I'd play the bass, I think. Yeah. Well then it's a great thing you're a singer then. We're, it really worked out for you. <laughs> um, good job. <laughs> good job. <laughs> and the last one we have here is the most surreal moment of your career so far was when? A uh, surreal moment. Yeah, like your number one just pinch me moment. Uh, we did a tour with the Goo Goo Dolls, Ooh. which was like definitely like a career satisfaction. That yeah. was kind of a kind of a crazy moment, just like kind of being at a normal show and then just like the Goo Goo Dolls are there, right. and we're just like, oh, well, there's. It's Goo Goo Dolls. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, totally a bragging right, for sure. For sure. Um, and now let's talk a little bit about your album, Blushing, which is out now, um, the latest one here. And so I was reading a little bit about the album, and you had said something that basically you wanted this to be an exaggerated version of Copeland. Mm -hmm. So you were taking just different aspects from your previous releases and making them bigger and bolder than before. Right. Um, but at the same time, this album sounds so different from anything you've ever done before. Um, so what little bits and pieces were you taking from your previous releases that made its way into this one? Uh, I don't think it's a huge jump. I think it sounds, to yeah. me, it sounds like exaggerated Copeland. Mm -hmm. uh, no, probably yeah. the only thing we leaned into harder than most people would expect would be kind of like the the kind of like groovy like R&B type of mm -hmm. vibes mm -hmm. which made it into a few songs yeah. um, and that's something that probably most people didn't know like probably no one really probably expected that I right. like R&B music or mm -hmm. like you know I write from a a lot of times I write from a bass line um, like that would be the start of the song would be the bass line and right. uh, it, it kind of puts me in a very R&B type of space, even though, you know, I don't have an R&B voice naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's probably the biggest, like, like, probably curveball people are hearing. But there's right. been electronic elements in our music. That's there have right. been symphonic elements in our music, rock, pop. So we tried to just be, you know, if we're going to be symphonic, let's just make a whole section that's, like, very symphonic and not try to marry it with not not try to like water it down with copeland like like mm -hmm. middle of the road copeland stuff is right. just like kind of make bold moves with all these yeah. like little things that have made up our music in the past right yeah i mean i guess compared to exora it's not that big of a jump but maybe for people who know you guys from your earliest releases it sounds very different but it's cool to see the evolution over time of how your music has progressed for yeah, sure i think that's that's fair yeah um and so why did you choose the word blushing as a title to kind of encompass this collection of songs and how does that relate to the lyrical content 
Uh, well, I mean, the the record's really like intimate mm -hmm. and uh, kind of romantic. Mm -hmm. Um, Romantic music from Copeland. Who knew? Who'd have thunk it? And <laughs> no. then, uh, and then that word is in colorless. So it's like that line in colorless is is my favorite line on the record, mm -hmm. probably. So um, just yeah. Um, yeah, just I liked the word too. It 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 looked like the word itself just kind of looks like that record feels. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's definitely yeah. a really beautiful theme, even visually, to go along with the word blushing, like the blush tones they used on the album cover, and everything's exactly. just like very cohesive, which is cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. the the blushing in in that lyric, the blushing is talking about a color. It's not actually talking about the act of blushing. It's talking uh -huh. about the the color blush. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that whole that whole verse kind of just like cycles through a bunch of different colors. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, thanks for noticing the visual element. Yeah, yeah, of course, absolutely. And another thing is compared to previous releases, I felt like the lyrics were a little more abstract and dreamlike than what I know of from previous Copeland releases at least. So why did you kind of choose that approach uh, stylistically for your writing this time? Um, I always like the more kind of surreal. I used to, on like You Are My Sunshine mm -hmm. and um, Ixora, mostly You Are My Sunshine, I wrote, I, I was like basically trying to write Twilight Zone episodes in song form. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so I've always kind of liked that surreal vibe and whether it's come across or not, uh, is like, you know, kind of, that's like the listener's <laughs> opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like it's always been sort of how I've hit stuff, at least on the last like three or four records. Mm -hmm. I even talked to, in, on the Eat Sleep Repeat record, which is the third record we did, I kind of wrote from my dreams also. So it's not like okay. it's like totally a new thing, but... Right. Um, Maybe it just felt a little more pronounced than before. Probably pushed, to me, at least. I pushed a little harder on it, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And as you were saying, you've had a lot of... Um, you've, you've had a very long career, 16 years since the first album. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, quite a hot minute. And so how have you maintained relevance to kind of keep your music relatable to your audience? Because all of you are kind of growing together. You know, your audience is older now and so are you and going through different chapters of your life. Well, I think maybe that's the key. Like, I think just stay, just writing stuff that's relevant and writing just our taste, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't, we're not really thinking too much about the audience right. when we're making a record. We're tr just trying to make stuff that we like. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's caused us to like, have a lot of like left turns on records, but I think it's also like mm -hmm. the people who come along and kind of give us the benefit of the doubt, like, oh, this sounds a little different than the last record, but they kind of trust a little bit that yeah. we're, it might not be as easy of a listen mm -hmm. as, you know, other other music, but m like maybe there's a bigger, bigger payoff mm -hmm. if you kind of dig into the record. Yeah. Do you ever kind of feel a like a power struggle of trying to maintain the things that people used to love about Copeland back then when you do write new music? Is that something you ever think about at all? I try not to think. I try yeah. not to think about so it. I feel like there's a bit of pressure. There could be at least to appease fans or something. Yeah. We. I used to. I mean, on the second record for sure, I felt mm -hmm. a lot of pressure to like, you know push ahead but then also like appease people and not push too far and <laughs> right. um and I what I ended up with was a record that I didn't like mm -hmm. so I think since I then I just I write what I think is cool and yeah um and just hope people go along with it yeah I mean one day I might make a misstep and you know lose all the fans but I no, like no. so far it's just been good like everyone you, you know everyone is pretty much down with whatever we want to do yeah. And I think at this point, people know that if they don't like a record that we make, you know, we're going to make another one and that's going to be different also. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I, I always hear about people who like, maybe they didn't like Eat, Sleep, Repeat, but then once You Are My Sunshine came out, they were back on. So like, yeah. maybe like a little bit of self-correction, uh, <laughs> in, in terms of like, uh, you know, appealing to different different tastes right yeah I'm sure just across the board you have very different people who listen to your music so it's kind of hit or miss but yeah. you're a seasoned professional you know the drill by now so I think you've got it down for sure Thank you. Um, and your music does really hold a lot of sentimental value for a lot of fans mm -hmm. especially because of the emotional nature of a lot of your music so when you think back to your earliest releases which one has the most nostalgia for you when you listen or play it back now is there like a particular song to you at all I'm 
Uh, I mean, the only time I hear this stuff is when we play it. Yeah. So uh, you have my attention. Just like mm -hmm. kind of like takes me back to a very particular era. Yeah. Um, so maybe that one. That's like a. That one. That's a song that we've played pretty much since we wrote it. Mm -hmm. I don't think we, there's been a single show that we haven't played that song. Good thing. It's vital. You need to have it. <laughs> no. So it's well worn. You know. It's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Probably the one. It's a well loved song for sure. Dang. Yeah. And you guys definitely I feel like more than other bands, at least for me personally, you do have the kind of music that really does take you back to a time and place, which is something very special. Thank so you. Yeah. And yeah, of course. And you are on a headlining tour right now, kind of in the middle of it, yeah. Right. Yeah, we did two weeks and then we'll be off for a few weeks and then pick back up. So tonight's like the last night of the first leg. I see. So you get to yeah. go home for a little, a little bit. Break. Yep. Exactly. So what else is coming up after the second leg of this tour the fans can look forward to? What else is in the works? I don't know. I think we'll <laughs> probably go to we'll probably do some overseas stuff. We want to get back to Indonesia mm -hmm. um, and Singapore. We really like going over there. Yeah. Um, We'd like to do like, I, I we all kind of want to go to the UK or do some oh. Europe stuff, but um, especially UK, but because uh, we hear from people a lot that want that want us to go over there, but we just haven't done much. Yeah. So. Well, maybe 2019 we'll will be the year. Maybe. We'll find out. We'll see. I like the suspense. <laughs> the moment we don't have any like firm plans, right, but that's right. all just like hopes and dreams yeah. type of stuff. Well, then we just got to relish in this tour while it lasts, right? Um, well, thank you so much for hanging out. It was great talking to thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, and everybody watching, if you haven't already, make sure you check out Blushing, subscribe for more videos, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.